In this video, we'll set up the Dialog System's save system. When we're done, it will play like this. The save system can save the state of destroyed objects, handle scene changes with transitions, save positions, save the current scene, and much more. When we play again and load the game, we can see that it loaded the saved scene, position, and the state of the dead enemy. To set this up, inspect the Dialog Manager and add a Save System component. Then add a Data Serializer. The Dialog System ships with binary and JSON serializers, and you can also write your own. Also add a Data Storer. The Dialog System ships with local disk-based and player prefs data stores, and you can also write your own. Then add a Dialog System Saver. This saves the Dialog System's internal Lua data to the save system. Inspect the player and add a Position Saver. Tick the Use Player Spawn Point checkbox. This tells the Dialog System which game object to use for the player spawn point. Now we'll inspect a destroyable enemy, add a destructible saver, and we'll also assign the dead or destroyed prefab to use when we load up the version that has been saved as being destroyed. On the Dialog Manager, we'll add a demo menu script, which is just a simple way to test out saving and loading. This demo script, very simply, calls the Save System's Save to Slot method. If you don't want to do any scripting, there are several other ways to set up saving and loading. For example, we can hook up a UI button, add a Save System Methods component, assign it to the OnClick event, and select the Save Slot method. Then you can specify the slot number to save in. The Dialog System's visual scripting support packages also come with support for the save system, so you can trigger saves and loads in Playmaker, Bolt, and other systems. Next, we'll set up a scene transition. I've already set up a trigger collider, so we'll add a scene portal component. We'll specify a destination scene name and make sure that that scene is in the build settings. Then we'll specify where in that scene the player should spawn. The player will spawn at the position of an empty game object named Spawn Point from Scene 1. Similarly, in this scene, when the player comes from Scene 2, we'll set it up so that the player arrives at Spawn Point from Scene 2. And now we can play. So if we save the game with the enemy alive, then kill the enemy and load the game, we can see that the enemy is alive again. And now we can test the scene portal. Finally, you might have noticed that that scene transition is rather abrupt. If you want to add a smoother scene transition, for example, a fade in out or an intermediate loading scene, 
we can do that with a scene transition manager component. I've added a scene fader canvas to the dialog manager. I'll assign that to the leave and enter transitions. And let's give this a try. When we go through the scene portal, it fades out and then feeds in gracefully. Now one thing you may notice when we save and then load is that the enemy plays its death animation again. This is because the prefab that we've assigned is configured to play its death animation. In practice, you could either have your game objects playing an already dead animation, or you could lengthen the fade in to hide the fact that it's setting up its state. And that concludes the Save System tutorial.